Webflow. Symbols. It's gonna be an offer you can't refuse. Let me show you. These things are of my mouth. Ah. Okay, so I've got a basic landing page here for a Godfather theme website. It's just got a nav bar, it has this little hero section, and then the bottom has this little kind of learn more on IMDB called action. And when you click it, it brings you to IMDB. And then I also have just other pages here. So if you click on the about page, there's just a little chunk about the movie. And if you go back to the home page, it's got the cast section. It's got six of the main cast members here. And then there's also a gallery page just some images, nice and simple. And of course these pages look really empty and I wanna be able to navigate all around. So I wanna put the nav bar on this page as well and even that IMDB call to action below. So you may be saying to yourself, ugh, do I have to build out those elements all over again? No, you don't. Could you just copy and paste the element into a new page? Sure, but if I just copy this into the new page and I make some changes, any changes I make here won't affect the other one that we originally created on the main page. So what's the solution to this? Symbols. Symbols are such a great tool in Webflow for reusing elements that repeat themselves. Nav bars are a common example of this. So if I just go to my homepage here, and I'm gonna click on the nav bar element, it's kind of the topmost component part of this. All I have to do is go to the symbol icon right here, and I click create new symbol, and all I have to do is type nav bar, and all of a sudden you get that green glow around it, that means it is a symbol. And then when you go back to the instance of it, it'll just kind of highlight the main symbol that you're on. But if I wanna make changes, I can still double click and edit them just like we would normally. And now Webflow is storing this within our symbol panel. And now it's almost just like another element, like a div or a text block that I can just drag and place wherever I want. So if I go back to our about page, I can now just go to our symbols and I have the nav bar. I'll just pop it right into the body. And there we go, all of a sudden we have the nav bar set. I'll do the same thing for the cast page. Drag my nav bar right to the body, go to the gallery page, get the symbol, and put it right there. There we go. And the best part about this is, instead of copy and pasting like we did earlier, now if I make a change on this symbol, because it's being referenced other places and the data is being stored, the changes will carry over anywhere else that the symbol is used. So say further down the line in my design process, I decide to make this uh, nav bar background, I don't know, red. And then I can just go to the other pages and you'll see that the nav bar is also red because it's all attached to the same symbol. So it absorbs the same styling and it really makes it easy. Say you had 100 pages on this website and it doesn't have to be a nav bar, it could be anything. And if I have a certain section that needs to change across the entire site, Having it in a symbol ensures that you can easily access it and make changes quickly without going page by page by page. Let's turn this back to black though. And now let's also go to our home page. Let's make this, just for more practice, I'll make this IMDB section also a symbol. So make sure you're on this container with the IMDB inside of it. And I'm going to just click symbols, create new symbols. Let's just type IMDB, there we go. And I wanna put this in all the different pages as well. So I'll just go to about, drag this right beneath it. I can go to cast, drag this beneath it. And lastly, just go to the gallery and I'll take our IMDB symbol, drop it in the body and it'll go right there. And what's great about this one is that I already had a hover interaction set on this IMDB. Just the letters kind of move sideways and there's a glow and Yes, the basic styling copy is over, but even that interaction effect that I have will carry over. So now it's on every page because it was part of that symbol. Saves me so much time. And again, if you ever wanna make changes, you'll notice your symbols are highlighted in green. So the basic elements are in blue here, the ones that are individual to this page, but anything that's in green and has that little symbol icon means that it's being referenced elsewhere in the site. So just be aware, if you change it here, it's gonna change it everywhere else where the symbol is being used. So what if you wanna make changes to a symbol so it has unique styling in one place but won't change the other instances? Well, you can right click on your symbol and just click unlink instance 
Now all of a sudden you'll see it switch back to blue. And now I can make changes here that won't affect anything else. So if I just switch around the order of these elements, I can just switch all of this. And now you see how it says cast about home. I can go to another page that had that nav bar. And this has the original formatting of home about cast. You'll see it has the green symbol still around it. But when I go back here, you'll see this is blue because now it's acting on its own. But what if I do want to make some formatting changes that will affect all the symbols, including the ones that have individual styling? Well, you can use overrides. So let's take this snippet here, this informational section, and let's make another one for the Godfather part two. So I will just tackle this container. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new symbol. I'll just name this uh, movie details. And now that it's a symbol, I can just add right beneath it. So now I've got two and the issue is here. So say I wanted to just make this part two, right? You'll see how it affects the original symbol right above it. We don't want that. We want the same formatting, but we don't want the changes to affect it. So what I can do is I can just click on the heading because that's the thing we're changing right now. If I go to the settings, I can click this plus purple icon here and I can create a new override field instance and I can name this anything I want. I'll name this movie title. So we've made our heading an overrided element. Now we can affect the changes individually, but let's just go through the other elements because we're gonna change a few more of these. This one, I'll just change this to release date. And then the director is the same, but I'll change the description to plot summary. So now when I am back in the main kind of highlighted instance of our symbol, all these fields here are the override fields that we created. And now I can type part two, and I can change the release date to December 18th, 1974. I can change this plot summary to this summary, and of course, and I can change the image to the Godfather part two poster. And what makes this whole process different from copy and pasting is that we can still make formatting changes within our symbols that will carry over, even though they're uniquely styled. So if we want to switch the order of some of these elements, say we wanted the release date above the Godfather, we wanted the director above the title as well. You'll see how it's changing on the bottom the same way. I could align these images to the right, to the left. I can change all of this, but it's affecting the other instance, even though we have some individual specifics to find. Another great thing that was added to Webflow in recent months is the concept of nested symbols. So this allows you to put a symbol inside of another symbol. For example, we could be in our movie block here. I could add a link block with some text block. I'll just click learn more about part one. I'll just skip ahead and style this a little bit. So really basic styling right here, but now I've got this link block and I can right click it and I can make this a symbol as well. So I'll just write IMDB link. And now we can do the same thing that we did earlier. See how it says part one on both. Clearly we want this one to be part two. So I can click on this text element because you're affecting that thing you're targeting. And I'll just create a new field for the override and I'll just write IMDB link. And now when I go to the main instance, which isn't the movie details, but it's the symbol inside it, which is IMDB link. And you'll see here that if I try to do the same thing we've been doing, I click part two and you notice it still changes. So because this is a nested symbol, it works a little bit differently. So to make sure I can change this individually, I have to link it to its parent symbol. So when I click this element that we're affecting, this symbol, I'm gonna click this button, link to parent, click new field, and I'll just say IMDB parent card. And to make sure this is all linked up, we just go to our parent symbol, which is our movie details. And you'll see down here, it's recognizing that inside there's another symbol that we can reference, and that's the button text. So I can change that to part two, and there we go. And they both have the same button symbol, and then you could attach the IMDB link in the settings if you wanna continue that further. Nice and quick video today. Use symbols wherever you can. It's gonna save you tons of time remaking your elements and allows you to focus on all the other cool things that you're building. So get out there, create something cool, and spend some time with your family because we all know that uh, a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man.